Hey everybody and welcome to Yo ND Raps and here we are on the eve of the 2023 Notre Dame football season getting ready to kick off. I'm Jeff and I'm of course joined with Frank and Mike and today we're going to go over our prediction. We're going to go over some of the other, or at least the spreads if we'd like any, and some of the other games and just talk about tomorrow and, and what we're looking forward to the most and what we're not. And with that said, what are you guys looking forward to? to the most tomorrow what question do you have that you want to see answered in a positive way tomorrow frank um i want to see them play a complete game uh if you recall we were all there at the game last year the first half couldn't have gone any better the second half was the complete antithesis of that um it, it, play 60 minutes of football play a complete game uh, and ideally get out of there healthy, but I'd like to see Notre Dame get control of the game and play everybody they brought along. Um, I, I For think four quarters. I... Developing some of these younger kids, getting kids some game reps, um, it, you know, that's going to help your depth down the line. I, I, I would be very disappointed if this game's – nip and talk into the second half tomorrow although that's possible get the win but I, i'd like to see a complete game and make a statement what about you mike what are you feeling tomorrow what are you what are you looking forward to the most out of notre dame i want to see if they're going to come out and try and physically dominate someone or are we going to go back to brian kelly tommy reese play calling where they think they can just out athlete them um, and you end up scoring five out of six possessions and losing the football game by doing that. I agree with you, and that brings us to the next question here. What worries you the most? And, Mike, you kind of hit the nail on the head for me. I'm, I'm interested to see if Notre Dame's going to react to, it's, it's weird to say, Navy's defense, but they're going to blitz. I mean, we know that's coming. That's what worked for them last year. You know, now that Tommy's gone, hopefully we make some sort of adjustment because Tommy got embarrassed in that second half. I mean, he got embarrassed. And uh, well, I know I'm saying Tommy, but you could also say, you know, it, it trickles down to, or up to Marcus as well. But um, so what worries you guys the most, Frank? I'd say the defense. This isn't a vintage Navy team. And for those of you that follow Navy football, uh, this isn't Chris McCoy or Ricky Dobbs or, um, you know, playing quarterback. Oh, and, Gizzard. The, and quarterback really makes this offense go. They don't have a dynamic player quarterback, at least that's been demonstrated yet. Um, but Are they going to throw tomorrow, though? There's a lot I think of talk there that you're going to see them. I think being that – Navy's going to take a page out of the playbook from last year, and they're going to say, we're not going to let you run, and we're going to confuse you with blitzes and numbers, and we're going to see if you can I was talking Navy's out. offense. Is Navy going to throw a little bit more tomorrow? Well, from everything I've read, I mean, that seems to be – in fact, I was reading an article this week, um, it's really interesting – about the evolution of the game here and and now and i don't know how much people follow this but with each year the ncaa tweaks its rules in terms of blocking below the waist and 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 where that's allowed to occur and the intent of it is they're taking blocks below the waist out of the game completely that has a big impact on option football teams Particularly, on I thought the, that was just on the outside. But the role keeps yeah. getting expanded every year. Understood. So, with that being said, it, it's that has an impact on the on the style of football Navy plays. Plus, they have some new coaches. Um, you know, instead of instead of rock, run an option outside, are you going to see quick games outside? Um, so you may see the ball in the air a little bit more from them. Um, but the point of the whole thing is, is 
their defense is going to come to play, and they're limited athletically, but I think they're going to make Notre Dame try to throw the ball, and I think Notre Dame's going to try to throw the ball. I think that's one of the reasons Hartman came here, and uh, I, I think to what Michael said earlier, there's going to be an element where Notre Dame's going to out-athlete Navy. I, I would prefer to see them control the game at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, but I'm not quite sold that that's going to happen. The only way this game is close is if Navy doesn't try and throw the football and Notre Dame does, because they will turn it over. So what worries you the most, Mike, tomorrow? Um, last year's second half, I'm not sure if that was, we're pinning this on play calling exclusively, the offensive line got embarrassed. Embarrassed. And did they correct that? You read these articles about how elaborate these blitz schemes our Navy has. That's BS. That's BS. That was guys missing assignments. So if they're stacking the box and blitzing, you guys are in agreement that we're, you got we're going to throw. We, we know that, but you're you're in agreement that we should throw at that point. Not 100% oh, of the time. I, I agree, not 100%, but a majority is going to be through the air. I think you pound them. The way Navy stays in this is we throw the football, we get three and outs or turnovers, and Navy eats clock and limits possession. And isn't there a rule change this year where they're not stopping the clock after the first down? Correct. Yeah, only in the last two, two minutes of each half. Yeah. Okay. So, with that said, obviously these are valid worries. I think most Notre Dame fans who have paid attention to what's going on and uh, specifically with the Navy game would agree with everything that we said. Um, I don't think it's a unique opinion. But with that said, Notre Dame's 20 and a half point favorites tomorrow. So, I want your prediction, and obviously that's going to let us know, would you pick Notre Dame over Navy tomorrow getting 20 and a half? Frank. Well, I'm not a big better, but yeah. Well, just go with it. We're pegging you down this time. I, I would, but my caveat to that is, are we are we winning 49-28? And is it going to be a shootout like the 1990 game? Where Pick a score I, right now. I I think it's I think. This could be a high-scoring game. Um, I'm, I, I'm hopeful, but I'm skeptical that Notre Dame's offense shuts down the option. Um, the one piece I'm hopeful of in that is J.D. Bertrand plays tomorrow, and he's an in-the-box kind of linebacker. This is a game made for he him. He didn't play last year, right? He, he tweaked something, got injured pregame. And they missed that. And right. consequently, you know, Navy ran the fullback the whole game and to great success. And Notre Dame really had difficulty taking the fullback away, which, you know, depending on how you look at it, if you're old school, that's the first thing you take away in an option offense traditionally. Um, Navy was able to exploit that. I, it, Notre Dame has to take that away. It's... Notre Dame's going to win by a couple touchdowns just by virtue of their roster. The question is, do you walk away feeling Notre Dame was in control of this game and played 60 minutes of football, or is it, it well, Notre Dame just played schoolyard football and now the athlete at these kids downfield? Because everybody knows Navy secondary is their weak link. They don't have the athletes to match up in in one on one coverage and fifty fifty balls, and uh, Notre Dame's wide receiver talent is unproven, but it's talented. Uh, and so you're taking Notre Dame. Course. You're you're taking Notre Dame. You're taking the points because we're going to keep track of this. And for those of you that are actually watching, we're going to do a prediction every week for Notre Dame against the spread, and then we're going to find our quote unquote lock that is a non Notre Dame game. And we're going to keep track of it. But with that said, Mike, 20 and a half. Are you taking the Irish or are you taking the middies? I'm going to set myself up for my normal disappointment. And I'm going to predict they're going to go out and step on them. 48-14. So for everyone watching, you should bet against me. 
I'm going 41-20 Irish. I am going to take the Irish tomorrow, 20 and a half. Um, I'm hoping we have a little bit of a reversal of fortune here. I think the first half might be a little sketchy, being that Navy might not be in their traditional set on offense. And I'm hoping the second half the Irish adjust and make up for it. But uh, we'll we need, see. We need no defensive linemen knee injuries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously with Navy or, you know, any of those runners, the Air Force, that's what that's what you don't want. Um, with that said, and I, I, I think I, I know what you guys are going to say here, there's only a handful of additional games this year. I think what U.S. – or excuse me, this week, USC and San Jose State's like a 35-point spread. But uh, – I, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to take Notre Dame as my lock this week. Where just because it's a short week, we will allow that. Um, are there any games outside of ND that stuck out to you guys at all? No, it's a boring um, week. Yeah, what is there? Eight games on the docket tomorrow. So the other game I'm interested. Yeah, I think it's like seven, something like that, and is, they're all kind of obviously lousy. the other ones. USC and San Jose State. But, you know, I. I Principally because we play USC this year. I want to see how they look, particularly on defense and particularly in the offensive line. And what's curious about that is I want to see if you, USC it comes out and just out-athletes San Jose State or do they play a complete football game and do they get better offensive line play? Do they get better defensive play this year? Um you know, they're probably going to score 45 to 50 points just because Caleb Williams. So are you taking them or not? Are you switching? Are you making your lock of the week USC? No, I'm I, I'm going to go out and say Notre Dame's going to cover tomorrow, but I'm anxious to see USC. And I like Mountain West football too, so I'll, you guys know that. So I'm going to watch. Who doesn't? Game. Yeah, so. But it's a common opponent. Still. So to to wrap it up here, I know you guys have been to your more than fair share of Notre Dame games. Um, I'm sure Frank will know this number. Mike might not. But how many Notre Dame Navy games do you think you've been to, or if you know? And what's your favorite memory? Frank, go ahead. So I've been to 18 Navy games. 18? 17 of them Notre Dame Navy games. Um, and obviously, two of them stand out. One is the 96 game in Ireland um, that I went to for my honeymoon. And, and the reason that game stands out is... No romantic. Yeah. The day before the game, Notre Dame was supposed to have a practice at Croke Park where the game was played. And it was going to be open to the public. So a handful of Notre Dame fans showed up, went into the stadium to see Notre Dame's football team. We're waiting around. We don't see anybody. And then lo and behold, Notre Dame's football team comes out onto the field and they're in street clothes. They're not going to practice. And this was completely impromptu. What ended up happening was... is You hung out with Mark Edwards more than your wife the rest of the honeymoon? We just we just all went down on the field and started mingling with the players. Um, yeah, Natalie got her picture taken with Mark Edwards and Lou Holtz. I, I met Joe Moore, who is a legend in my mind of offensive line coaches. But we met Autry Denson, Corey Miner. I mean, Notre Dame fans from back in that time period, a lot of those names will ring out. So that was kind of a thrill meeting those guys. And it was very casual, and it's probably not something that would be replicated too much today. What's your other memory? Uh, 86 Navy game at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. That was Lou's first year. Uh, we went down to see it was a night game, and uh, it, it was uh, Tim Brown had a hell of a game that night. He, he went for like seven for 180, and uh, it, it, it was – you know, Lou's first year, there was a lot of enthusiasm after a rough start to the season. You started to see bit by bit what this team was going to look like and how he was molding it. So that was a good time. 
I don't know where Mike just got to, but I'd like to ask him his. Mine, I I don't know how many Notre Dame Navy games I've seen, but um, I'd say 05 for some of the reasons that you're mentioning, Frank. It was um, Weiss's first year, and there was excitement around it, and uh, Notre Dame was excited at that point as well. And then uh, last year, <laughs> and uh, the first half was cool. I still don't know that I've seen the second half just because some of our – some of the company we had at the game <laughs> couldn't you know, be he helped himself. out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would say that well, uh, last year. And, and we've seen so some fun. turns. We were we yeah. were at the Yo Seven game that they lost. The I was not. Streak. We were, and I was at the Yo Nine game uh, that Notre Dame also Mike, lost. What's your favorite Notre Dame Navy? moment that you've seen live and do you have any idea how many you've been to no idea less than frank but a lot they're always forgettable you're either if you go and hammer them you're an asshole team for blowing them off the field if you play them close you suck and god forbid we'll you lose them. and we've seen them lose so <clears throat> my i have three favorite navy games none of them are against notre dame they're all against Army. No, because you went on those Navy. Nerd, or Army Navy games back in the day. Yeah. All right, I'm going to change. My favorite Navy game was uh, Navy and Holy Cross in 19. And uh, I have a buddy affiliated with Holy Cross that we all know, and, and we went down, and it was just pretty relaxed. So <laughs> it was a good game, but it was hot. It was hotter than hell. Um, but before we sign off, do you guys have anything you want to add before game day? They better run the football tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I think what you see out of them tomorrow is a harbinger. It's what you're going to get all year. It, exactly. And it, it, because if they come out and they just throw the ball all over the schoolyard against Navy tomorrow and they win the game, yeah, that's great. You beat Navy. That's the objective. But are you really going to be able to do that against Ohio State in three or four weeks? You're not going to out-athlete Ohio State. You're going to have to play complete football. So I want to see some semblance of a structured offense, and I want to see a defense that gets off the field and creates turnovers. I think if there's two things Notre Dame's defense could improve upon is – Red zone defense, producing turnovers, creating havoc, and, and getting off the field on third down. And I, I don't care what style of offense you're playing. You're either doing it or you're not. Um, and, and this is an opportunity along with next week to, to work out some kinks, to play some people, to get some reps. Um, so when you go into the season a little bit deeper, and let's not forget the Notre Dame schedule is front loaded this year. I mean, looking at it on paper, by September 30th, their regular season's half over, and they don't have an off week. Uh, I think until October 21st. I don't have it in front of me, but I think that's it. So you're eight games into your season by mid October. Um, so, All right, this isn't a season play. preview here. You're looking forward to four quarters tomorrow. No, I am. I'm just there's. I'm setting the table for the rest of the year. So what we see out of Navy, I, I, I want to see carried through. I mean, this Notre Dame's going to win tomorrow. That's not the point. The point is, is how they win by 21. So. All right, well, gentlemen, I appreciate your time. To everyone watching, check out our other videos. We're, we're uploading all kinds of stuff. So if there's anything that you want to see, ask. Please like, subscribe, comment, and let us know. Um, we are going to be back Saturday or Sunday with just a little wrap-up. Um, but like I said, we're going to try and just post some other videos throughout the week, maybe one or two, just little guys. So check us out, and uh, we will see you later. And as always, go Irish.